We know that stars produce and emit light as a result of the thousands upon thousands of iterations of the thermonuclear fusion process going on in their cores at any single point in time. But how much energy is associated with one iteration of that thermonuclear fusion process? Since we're talking about the core of the sun, we're basically asking, how much energy is produced when four hydrogen atoms fuse to become one helium atom? The mass of a single hydrogen atom is really tiny. I mean, it's really, really tiny. 1.6737 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. Very small. It's so tiny that it's almost unfathomable how incredibly small this number actually is. So, four of these really, really tiny atoms are necessary to create one helium atom. One helium atom is also really tiny. Really, really tiny. Sure, it's got a mass that's slightly bigger than a single hydrogen atom. I mean, four of them did come together to create this one helium atom. But there's still a little bit of mass lost in the process that needs to be accounted for. So what happened to this mass? Where did it go? Turns out, this mass that was lost is converted into energy. And that's how we get the light that we see from the sun. Each of the individual thermonuclear fusion processes produces this little spark of energy. And since there are so many hydrogen atoms fusing into so many helium atoms at any given time in the core of the sun, it's safe to say that a lot of energy is produced in the core. But let's rewind and figure out exactly how much comes from a single iteration of fusing four hydrogen atoms into one helium. To do this, we will use E equals mc squared, yay, where m is the amount of mass lost in the process of thermonuclear fusion, and c is the speed of light. We'll start with determining the value of m, the mass lost in the process. To do this, we'll first need to know how much mass is involved at the beginning of the fusion, so the mass of the four hydrogen nuclei. And then from that number, we'll subtract the mass of the single helium nucleus. These are the values that we'll use for the mass of the four hydrogen nuclei and the helium nucleus. Once we have that number, we'll multiply it by the speed of light squared. This will give us the amount of energy created in the process of fusing hydrogen into helium. And when we say created, we really mean converted into existence from the mass that was lost. That mass became this energy. To do the actual math itself, we start with E equals mc squared, where, as we mentioned before, m is the mass lost in the process. To determine its value, we subtract the mass of helium from the mass of the four hydrogen atoms. Replacing the variables with our values, we have 6.693 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms minus 6.645 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. The mass of the four hydrogen atoms minus the mass of the helium atom. Notice that since both of the six point something numbers are multiplied by a factor of 10 to the power of negative 27, we can factor out that 10 to the power of negative 27 and bring the six point somethings together in parentheses. So the math is a little bit easier. Or just have your calculator do it anyway, and it wouldn't really make a difference. But 6.693 minus 6.645 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms gives us a mass of 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 29 kilograms lost in the fusion process. This number is on the order of magnitude of being 100 times smaller than either of the two constituent masses of hydrogen or helium. So it's a really, really tiny amount of mass that's lost. But that's the number we plug in for m, and e equals mc squared, and we use the speed of light for c since that's what it is. So plugging in our values, we have 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 29 kilograms times the speed of light squared, don't forget to square it, which gives us a value of 4.32 times 10 to the power of negative 12 joules. That's a really tiny amount of energy, but that's only for one hydrogen to helium fusion process, where we've taken four hydrogen atoms and created one helium. And keep in mind, there are 10 to the power of 57 atoms of hydrogen in the sun. 
That's a one followed by 57 zeros, 57 zeros of hydrogen atoms, all of which are in turn fusing into helium, emitting 4.32 picojoules of energy in the process. So one iteration of the thermonuclear fusion process gives us a really, really tiny amount of energy, but with the amount of hydrogen fusing into helium, that number for the energy gets amplified by a lot. And that's how we get the energy from the sun.